We'll come back after the second break, uh, and that's the second half of the show where we are going to move on to uh, a new guest in the studio. And we're going to talk to Mrs. Shiromi Masakorala, who is the Senior Manager, Corporate Communications and CSR. Uh, what, what we are going to talk about is uh, uh, the most common, commonly heard uh, everybody's into it. It's, it's all about CSR, corporate social responsibility. But here I must emphasize that uh, this particular company who has, who's uh, got three or four main uh, taglines or slogans behind their br corporate branding like uh, concern for people, uh, passion for customer and innovation and so on. Uh, we've got this company down to specially speak about the unlimited the enormous amount of work that they have done in this country, uh, not for any reason, because um, charity is not something that you speak of or you get glory or you try to advertise and get uh, a popularity uh, over the media, but we've actually got them down uh, purely because uh, to, uh, to see what they have done, to acknowledge what they have done to this country and mainly uh, to show you out there that there are people doing things like this and uh, that there is a chance for you as well uh, to be a part of this uh, change, to be a part of this drive in becoming, in making this country the wonder of Asia. So uh, we've got uh, this uh, amazing company who has done so much, uh, especially uh, uh, to its stakeholders when it comes to CSR. Uh, that covers so many, but we are talking about what they have done to the community of Sri Lanka today. And to do that, we have this uh, vibrant lady here with us. Uh, she is Mrs. Shiromi Masakorala, who is the Senior Manager, uh, Corporate Communications and CSR for HEMA's Enriching uh, Lives. HEMA's Enriching Lives. So we're going to talk to her about what they have done and the enormous amount of work uh, uh, this company has done, especially uh, from their uh, charity scheme, which is called Piavara. Uh, what an em enormous amount of work they have done. Before we go on to anything about uh, P.A. Varashiro, would you first tell, of us, tell, 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 tell us about yourself, uh, your career at HEMAS. How uh, fascinating is it uh, to be uh, working, to be employed at HEMAS, and especially to do a job which, uh, which, uh, which gives you much, so much passion uh, in helping people? What, what has your career been in, uh, at, at HEMAS? Well, it's a very challenging job that mm -hmm. I do and it's a lot of work that goes into it mm -hmm. and uh, what I must say is that I'm a very, very, one of, our, one of I suppose, the happiest employees at HEMAS mm -hmm. uh, because there's so much uh, good you get out of the work you do mm -hmm. and a lot of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. uh, more than that also the backing you get from your management. Mm -hmm. Uh, I report directly to the CEO and the board mm -hmm. and uh, they have a lot of passion for mm -hmm. what they do. Mm -hmm. So community investment is very serious business at HEMAS. Mm -hmm. So it's and we do not do this for purely publicity. Mm -hmm. uh, we are quite silent on this mm -hmm. but we've done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, uh, well just to brief you, we have about 33 model preschools island wide. Mm -hmm. We work with the Ministry of Child Development. Mm -hmm. And these schools are in Hambantota from Jaffna to Badula and all mm -hmm. over the country. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of traveling, a lot of uh, coordination that uh, goes into my work. Mm -hmm. And as a lady. Mm -hmm. As an iron lady. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was speaking to her earlier on and I was just uh, uh, amused, amazed by the amount of traveling she does around the country. Well, of course, she always stresses the point of the support that she gets from the government officials when it comes to starting from the Gram Seven Iradari to the AJ, everyone. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's not easy to get all these people into one mindset and uh, go ahead with your uh, with your plans. So let's let's continue the conversation. Uh, should I tell us? Uh, sorry, I interrupted. But please go ahead. So that support also is so mm -hmm. important, you know, somebody has to encourage you. So mm -hmm. you've got to have a good uh, management mm -hmm. backing, mm -hmm. you need your family to back you, mm -hmm. and you need the passion mm -hmm. to drive what you do. Okay. Shrimi, tell us about the Piavara scheme. The, uh, tell us about how it started, how was this initiated, why Piavara? Uh, what was the main reason for HEMAS uh, to come out with this scheme? Tell us the history and how it has progressed throughout the years. Yeah. 
Krishanta, in 2002, mm -hmm. uh, we, by 2002 we were doing all kind of charity work, but mm -hmm. ad hoc, you know, we used mm -hmm. to paint bus halls or do mm -hmm. up a hospital or something mm -hmm. like that. But we wanted to be focused. Mm -hmm. So first thing we did was, we didn't know what the needs of the country is. Mm -hmm. So we went and met the Ministry of Social Welfare, mm -hmm. and at that time the Children's Secretariat was there. Uh, then they t told us that early childhood development mm -hmm. is something that a mm -hmm. lot of people have not focused. Mm -hmm. So why don't you think of this area? And it was really uh, going in line with us because mm -hmm. as Hema's, mm -hmm. our biggest, one of our biggest brands is Baby Sherami. Mm -hmm. So we deal with infants. Mm -hmm. And when you say early childhood, mm -hmm. from infancy, the next step is early childhood. Mm -hmm. so Shirami, if I can uh, beg your pardon and interrupt you there. I want to ask your opinion. Now, uh, you mentioned something very important. You said um, prior to 2002, two or three, uh, that the charity or the CSR was all bits and pieces here and there. There are still many companies who are following the same, uh, uh, not f so focused, you know, a little bit of sponsorship there, a little bit there, but from there you have come on to a more focused. What is, the, could you just tell uh, our viewers what, how important it is to be focused on uh, a particular thing because you've got the experience of doing it. If, if you could explain that yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, it's so important to focus on one thing because mm -hmm. that's the impact, mm -hmm. you create an impact. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> many people will benefit. Mm -hmm. so, uh, see, if you do ad hoc, so mm -hmm. many things, mm -hmm. finally you won't get that end result. Mm -hmm. But whereas when you are focused mm -hmm. and when you go with the needs of the country, mm -hmm. that's definitely you get uh, what you really look for. Okay. So in 2002 you started this change and you were focused on what happened thereafter? Uh, so the reason why we selected early mm -hmm. childhood development mm -hmm. was as I said about Baby Sherami mm -hmm. being one of the leading baby brands mm -hmm. and uh, when you say early childhood development mm -hmm. there's a health component involved in it mm -hmm. and we are also <coughs> known as one of the leading healthcare uh, uh, companies mm -hmm. that represent healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, then also we are a Sri Lankan company. Mm -hmm very much at heart is our identity being Sri Lankan. Mm -hmm. So we uh, also wanted at that time that this program, this project we select mm -hmm. should have an impact on our children, the country. Mm -hmm. So these are the three main requirements that led us mm -hmm. to have started this pre -call peer, uh, the project called Peerwara mm -hmm. and we partnered the Ministry of Child Development and Women's Empowerment mm -hmm. that was a strategic partner to mm -hmm. this whole project. I mean without partnering the government mm -hmm. we would have never achieved what we have <coughs> to, uh, uh, in the long run. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started the project. Mm -hmm. Shiram, uh, once again uh, you mentioned that it's important to be partnered with the Child Development Authority and, and Women's uh, Affairs. That did you ever, uh, in looking back, uh, imagine the support that you needed from these authorities and the support that you've got from them? Uh, what what has the relationship been? How how challenging or how practical or how friendly was it to work with these authorities? Well, Kashanta, very good <laughs> question. <laughs> A <laughs> lot of people think, mm -hmm. especially in the corporate sector, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, it's mm -hmm. so difficult to work with government departments mm -hmm. because there's so much bureaucracy, mm -hmm. so much red tape, mm -hmm. and they think that you know you can't get anything done. Mm -hmm. But I would say no. Mm -hmm. right? It's how you relate to them, how you deal with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they know that mm -hmm. you are genuine, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people go and promise the moon and the earth and mm -hmm. saying oh, we'll do this and that, but they mm -hmm. don't deliver. Mm -hmm. And if you try to uh, sort of, you know, uh, go with the uh, uh, thinking, saying that you know it's not going to happen. It's mm -hmm. not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you need to be very culture sensitive when you work mm -hmm. with the government authorities. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't be going in a denim and a pair of t-shirts, yeah. t-shirt, <laughs> and expect <laughs> them to uh, respect you or yeah. uh, listen to you. Okay. Or you can't be going there and trying to talk uh, in a language that is quite alien to mm -hmm. them. You need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And when you really develop that, cultivate that relationship, mm -hmm. it is so easy to get anything done. Mm -hmm. And they are, a, actually they are a bunch of people with a lot of passion, they want to work. Now mm -hmm. I work with them on mm -hmm. Saturdays, mm -hmm. Sundays, Poya days. Really? And <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> okay. and uh, you know, during tsunami and okay. during the post-war period, okay. when we were working in the refugee camps, mm -hmm. I mean there were days and nights we worked. Mm -hmm. 
and they don't ask for overtime they don't ask for that allowance this allowance no they are very very committed mm -hmm. so it's amazing it's just how you develop your relationship mm -hmm. with them and understand them mm -hmm. and once you build that mm -hmm. krishanta anything is possible okay. well said you know. <laughs> 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 that's uh, that's uh, something that uh, you and i all can learn something uh, something uh, revealed um, a secret <laughs> of the iron lady and the, that magnificent co company please continue shall what happened then so initially krishanta the uh, governor the, the ministry the children secretariat mm -hmm. said okay uh, can you do 10 model preschools okay. in sri lanka this was way back in, in 2002 uh, 2002 okay late 2002 okay so they selected a few districts mm -hmm. and they said we have some schools can mm -hmm. you upgrade them to model centers mm -hmm. and they gave the criteria mm -hmm. and then we worked uh, with them together so we uh, discussed a few objectives mm -hmm. firstly we had to develop the infrastructure mm -hmm. to make it a model school mm -hmm. we had to train teachers mm -hmm. we also needed to uh, create awareness amongst the villagers the mm -hmm. community the parents mm -hmm. and also to sustain it mm -hmm. we needed their support mm -hmm. so all these we put together we had uh, meetings with the divisional secretaries we went to the kacheris we went to the gramani ladaris we went to the schools and uh, that's how it started mm -hmm. so by 2003 mm -hmm. we had set that model and it was extremely successful mm -hmm. so we developed this uh, really laid back type kind of schools to be model centers mm -hmm. and even to date krishanta some of those schools are being taken as the best training centers in sri lanka when foreign delegates come ministry takes them especially to polonnaru polonnaru is one of the best schools we have and at that time uh, jaffna was also given to us and there was a peace uh, process at that okay. time and we could just you know with the greatest difficulty to get to jaffna mm -hmm. so i remember going to jaffna in 2002 Uh, with the ministry officials and i was so saddened to see all these little children about 80 children mm -hmm. inside this little garage and they called it a preschool mm -hmm. so uh, we decided no we're going to do up at least a small school mm -hmm. with such difficult situations mm -hmm. we were very adamant that we will do up a school mm -hmm. so uh, we got the land from the jaffna municipal council in nalur mm -hmm. and we built a very basic school for them but it was not easy because you had to travel on a nine you sure, we are talking about an era where yeah. uh, the ltd had their own judicial uh, controls yes. where they had their own banks where they had their own police stations as well yes. uh, where our northeast was uh, considered as another kingdom yeah. uh, how you as a woman how challenging was it to to you uh, to go back to, um, to go to that area at that time Uh, a, a bit of experience that you share would you like to share with us please yes sir uh, krishant i never had anything called fear okay and i was very passionate of what we were doing mm -hmm. and i was very concerned for the children mm -hmm. so it was there's a checkpoint at omanthi mm -hmm. and they used to give a hard time mm -hmm. and uh, purposely when you know a lady i had another colleague of mine two mm -hmm. ladies with this driver what are they doing <laughs> right so they come and give us uh, uh, the english mm -hmm. forms and mm -hmm. say no you have to fill it up mm -hmm. in english so mm -hmm. we said no our lang mother tongue mother tongue is sinhalese we mm -hmm. would prefer a sinhala form mm -hmm. so we used to have a little argument there mm -hmm. you know they got so bored with us mm -hmm. uh, we never gave in and we were supposed to pay 2 rupees to go on mm -hmm. that road and i was adamant that i don't pay mm -hmm. so i said no i'm not going to pay because see i'm not going to do anything mm -hmm. illegal this is i mean come on mm -hmm. i'm going and working for your children mm -hmm. as a company we are doing that for uh, your children mm -hmm. and why should we pay for pay you two rupees mm -hmm. you should pay us mm -hmm. right so uh, it was very interesting mm -hmm. so they were really getting very bored with us mm -hmm. and uh, so we used to managed mm -hmm. somehow or other to mm -hmm. get a go pass or monthly check point without paying the two rupees okay. and we were very frequent visitors there <laughs> okay. and uh, so there would have been a stage where they gave up and they, they just, just them in. they <laughs> gave up and every time they see us mm -hmm. like i travel say about 10 to 12 times to Jaffna mm -hmm. during that time mm -hmm. so every time the news they had specific people and they knew mm -hmm. i'm sure they would have been checking as to what we were doing mm -hmm. so uh, basically you know they gave up and mm -hmm. they said okay you can go mm -hmm. but when we even went to Jaffna mm -hmm. uh, i knew that you know we were being followed mm -hmm. and uh, you have that mm -hmm. little bit of insecurity mm -hmm. but then your uh, purpose is so genuine purpose mm -hmm. is so sincere mm -hmm. i had nothing to fear mm -hmm. so finally we did have some you know hiccups mm -hmm. but we managed to put up the school mm -hmm. and we managed to open it also mm -hmm. we had a little ceremony mm -hmm. and uh, they had a school mm -hmm. till 
2007 mm -hmm. and now since we actually we did another school mm -hmm. uh, during last year mm -hmm. and now they use the old school uh, to as a sort of a daycare center okay, so it was very interesting and meeting those people okay. in Jaffna at that time okay. the community okay. uh, so I want to ask you one last question before we go on to our first break that is uh, you're a person who traveled with so much of restrictions so much of uh, things happening around you at that time comparing then and now Comparing the uh, people that you met then and now, what do you think of uh, what do you think uh, of of the situation now? Peace. My goodness, there's such a difference. <laughs> <laughs> people are so free to talk to you because previously, when I go, mm -hmm. you know, they were scared to talk mm -hmm. to you. They would try to avoid you, mm -hmm. and they would answer your question, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But it's so different now. You know, you feel so welcome. Mm -hmm and uh, you have that freedom of movement mm -hmm. and you can speak to people you can mm -hmm. go places mm -hmm. and talk to the people and ask what do you know what mm -hmm. you want from us mm -hmm. how can you develop this further mm -hmm. what sort of support do you need from us and the government and mm -hmm. that kind of thing uh, but at that time we couldn't our restrictions were monitored mm -hmm. and we were actually scared mm -hmm. but i and my colleague and you know we never uh, showed it mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we pretended to be very brave <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to uh, move on to a very short break. Once we come back, uh, we'll be asking some more interesting questions about her experiences working uh, with Hemas and uh, getting involved in all these charity work. So don't go, don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back. You're watching the Biz Week edition on the Roundtable. Thank you for joining me once again after the break. Uh, joining me this evening is Shiromi Masakorala, who is the Senior Manager, Corporate Communications and CSR at HEMAS. And we're talking about mainly about uh, the Piavara scheme that they have, the Piavara. Uh, let's get back on to the, uh, to the subject once again. Tell me, what's uh, you mentioning about early childhood development? This is the core. Uh, of the peer scheme. Let's talk about that. Uh, early childhood is something extremely important mm -hmm. in our country. A lot of people, Krishanta, doesn't understand the importance of mm -hmm. this. When you say early childhood development, we talk of uh, from the conception to the first eight years of life of a human being. This is the time a child, a person, you know, basically the personality was developed mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's you talk about the holistic development of a child. So it's the health, the nutrition, the cognitive development, the motor development, then you have the language development, mm -hmm. then you have the social, mm -hmm. socialization, all these things start at this mm -hmm. age. So it's extremely important <coughs> give the right care, right do the right thing with children at mm -hmm. this age. Mm -hmm. But in our country, a lot of people think that, you know, oh, there's time. There's time. <laughs> and yeah. when it especially comes to preschool education, mm -hmm. people think it is reading and writing which is the exact opposite thing. You don't teach reading and writing for those children. It's motor sense. It's like mm -hmm. this motor, the sensory, you know, mm -hmm. you have to develop those mm -hmm. things and the language skills, mm -hmm. uh, l listening to somebody, you know, how to work, uh, get around with your peers, mm -hmm. socializing, mm -hmm. you know, those values, everything mm -hmm. is inculcated during this time. It's not reading and writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, reading and writing comes later, mm -hmm. like uh, actually a preschool is a lot of a kind of a bridge between a primary school and the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the preschool education. But in our country, parents insist that they do homework at this age. Mm -hmm. But it is a time that children learn through experiment. They mm -hmm. do all kinds of activities mm -hmm. and they learn. Mm -hmm. And that's how concepts are uh, learned. And if you don't get the right concept, Right, one and one is two. You can, you know, like a parrot, you can repeat one and one is two. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand the concept of what is one and one. Mm -hmm. So children do all kinds of activities. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, I can just relate the story to you. There was this particular preschool, mm -hmm. and uh, this two uh, baby was making two compitus. Mm -hmm. So she, uh, the teacher said, you know, now this is one and this is one. So one and one is two. Mm -hmm. The little kid said, no, it's not two. I'll show you. And he took one computer and put it on top of another and said, one and one is one. Mm -hmm. 
right? See the kind of thinking. Now, if you ridicule that child, you know, it can affect that <coughs> child's whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's a very intelligent way of Absolutely. doing things. Yeah. You know, in I think mathematics, you mm -hmm. discuss this mm -hmm. in later mm -hmm. uh, classes. Mm -hmm. But this is the child's thinking. So a lot of parents, like you know, they want their child to basically memorize things. Okay, my child can count up to hundred. My child knows the alphabet. It's not learning the alphabet or counting. It's the concept whether your child has understood. So the how they learn is through activity at this, st this stage. It's extremely important. And also our parents have the tendency sort of, you know, do everything for your child. When a child is trying to put the pair of shoes on or, on or you know, they're trying to do something independently, no, no, you can't. Let me help you out. Which is the exact wrong thing that you do. You know, you still tell the child, my God, you're growing up, so you can now uh, do things by yourself, encourage them, mm -hmm. let them make decisions, certain decisions, not everything, I mean little decisions mm -hmm. and admire them. So you build personality. Mm -hmm. You know all these later on psychological problems, all kinds of complications in life starts at this early stage, the, the experience, the mm -hmm. foundation. So this is an extremely important area. Mm -hmm. So in preschools play a vital role mm -hmm. in this. So this is why Piavara was based. So that's how Piavara came into life. <coughs> Especially we uh, we are going with preschools because we mm -hmm. have the penetration mm -hmm. uh, to this age group of three to five and the young parents. Mm -hmm. So we can do a lot of awareness and okay. so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a few objectives under this program. Uh, we have infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. Then we have the teacher training programs. Mm -hmm. Then we have parent associations and awareness programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we also have for sort of uh, uh, special need children to you know empower them mm -hmm. and we have a very special thing uh, that is during disasters mm -hmm. uh, man-made or natural or whatever mm -hmm. how do we intervene mm -hmm. and also we uh, do sort of child protection work with the Sri Lanka police in curtailing child abuse mm -hmm. so there are many programs mm -hmm. under this uh, at present Krishanta we operate 33 model preschools. Mm -hmm. This is of course in the Children's Secretariat, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Child Development. Mm -hmm. All these schools, we have to think of sustainability. Mm -hmm. When we build, we come into agreements with the municipalities or the Pradesh is Abbas. Mm -hmm. This early childhood development preschools mm -hmm. is a devolved subject. Mm -hmm. You have the central government, then you have the local councils and the Pradesh is Abbas. Mm -hmm. It's managed by them. Mm -hmm. So we always go and work with these Pradesh is Abbas or the local councils with the ministry. Mm -hmm. We have an agreement with them mm -hmm. and it's very clear as to what HEMA's role is. Mm -hmm what the municipality or the Pradesh Sabha role is and what the ministry's role is. And then we have continuous monitoring. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as I said, we upgraded about 10 to 13 mm -hmm. schools to be to the model schools mm -hmm. uh, prior to the tsunami. Mm -hmm. Then came the tsunami. What was the role of HEMAS when the tsunami strike in uh, 2004? Yeah, at that time I remember the government asking the private sector to you know come in and help. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about infrastructure development, road development and so on. Mm -hmm. So at that time we said no, we have already with the government, with the line ministry working on early childhood development, especially small children, mm -hmm. let us look into that. Mm -hmm. So at that time we got permission and the government said please go ahead. So myself with the Ministry of Child Development, we all went all over the country mm -hmm. trying to collect statistics as to how many schools were destroyed, what are the status of these children. So we did a whole uh, uh, collection of data mm -hmm. and we found that there are about 42,000 kids in refugee camps mm -hmm. and about 150 schools totally washed off mm -hmm. and so many other damages mm -hmm. and uh, initially we had a discussion. The first thing was we set up temporary preschools mm -hmm. and play areas in identified makeshift camps. That was the largest makeshift camps mm -hmm. that was in Ampara and Southern Province. Mm -hmm. uh, now in these camps we uh, got the teachers trained. The teachers, was they were from the community, mm -hmm. they were living in those camps, actually they had teachers. Mm -hmm. We got the Columbia University to come in mm -hmm. uh, to help how to, you know, uh, help children with tra trauma. Mm -hmm. Then we provided all the stationery, the mm -hmm. bags and the infrastructure mm -hmm. required for preschool inside these camps. Mm -hmm. The main thing was the play areas. We mm -hmm. set up play areas okay. using whatever material available. But Krishanta, nothing comes. If you just give anything free, yeah. That's, people, that's the tendency. People do don't seem not to appreciate, it. appreciate and they really mm -hmm. don't care. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to make that mistake. What we did is even within the makeshift camps, we mm -hmm. got the community involved. Mm -hmm. So let's make the play area together. Mm -hmm. So they were part of it and there was a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. So that play area, the preschool was taken by care by the community. They didn't damage it. Because mm -hmm. I saw in some of the makeshift camps, you know, whatever the government provides, 
you know they so who cares kind of thing you know they tend to break mm -hmm. they tend to destroy mm -hmm. and their mindset was also you know of course you need to understand their situation there's a lot of frustration mm -hmm. but in this case they were very much involved because it's to do with children, their families, there's a lot of idle time. So in the makeshift camp, this became a real uh, favorite place for the children. Children, I must interrupt. From there, now we're talking about one particular aspect, the tsunami. And then later on, uh, at the peak of the war, when most of the uh, areas were recaptured by the government forces, we had uh, camps which were uh, arranged for the people to resettle until everything was over. Uh, were there any involvement with HEMAs in areas uh, of this as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing is uh, the ministry movement actually prior to the war. Mm -hmm. By February mm -hmm. the government was getting ready mm -hmm. and we thought there would be refugees coming mm -hmm. in. So the Manic Farm uh, relief villages were set up. So in March we went with the ministry mm -hmm. and we set up preschools and play areas mm -hmm. there. And then by May you know there's a huge influx and there's a lot of people and we had about 11,000 children approximately mm -hmm. in all the seven zones. Mm -hmm. So we set up the preschool mm -hmm. and that is the preschool, Krishantha, mm -hmm. everybody saw on TV. Okay. All the UN dignitaries, <laughs> all the state okay. uh, visits, everybody okay. went to that school mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. those play areas were set up mm -hmm. by us. But we mm -hmm. never, you know, uh, label them as HEMAs yeah. and Shurami, you, uh, you, you, you mentioned about your number one product in childcare being baby Shurami. Did you ever at least in any of these places at least give a brochure to say that you know use our product uh, by any chance? No, no. Prashanta, this is not our <laughs> policy. <laughs> our management is very very uh, you know clear mm -hmm. as to what we do. Mm -hmm. We don't commercialize mm -hmm. our community investment mm -hmm. because we have gone with very genuine interest mm -hmm. and genuine sincerity. Uh, we don't want to commercialize what we do for our society and children. Mm -hmm. So actually a lot of people used to ask, my goodness, that's a fantastic little school mm -hmm. in that situation. Mm -hmm. Why don't you all put up a board? But we were not interested mm -hmm. in setting, putting up boards. Uh, <laughs> but we wanted to make a difference in their lives. Mm -hmm. And we did, Krishanta. I'm very happy. That's what I said. You know, I'm the happiest person doing a wonderful job Fantastic. in the sense, at least for me, because yeah. I feel so happy that, you know, you get something else for the company mm -hmm. also. I know everybody yeah. is so uh, yeah. involved in it. Yeah. Surely, I'm, I'm one of the happiest people to get you down to the studio and ask you and about so much of things that you have done throughout the years, your company, enriching lives, uh, f focused mainly on development of community. You've done so many, uh, starting with the preschool concept with Piavara, then further extending it to the tsunami, how you had the camps and how you still kept on uh, the education sector going on then thereafter, uh, even uh, in the Northeast and so much of work you've done. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. I'm sure we can talk for hours and hours and hours. So, so much of in experience in you, so much of uh, knowledge in doing this. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to say, uh, time's up and, and we got to move to the studio. Well, th um, let me thank you uh, sincerely for taking your time off uh, being here and sharing your experiences. Um, true to the fact, you are an iron lady. So all the best to you and we wish you and your company all the best uh, in all the future endeavors uh, that you do uh, with the children of this country. Thank you very much. You know I mean? Well, uh, with that, we're moving on to uh, uh, the last segment of the show, which is going to be the uh, stock market uh, update. We'll be having a look at that as well, uh, what's been happening in the stock market within the last week. And thereafter, we will also have a look at the forex rates, how the currencies have been uh, going up and down. Aussies uh, pretty high these days. So we'll have a look at that as well. And uh, with that, we say goodbye. And we see you again with another edition of the Biz Week, another interesting topic, just like this one, on the Biz Week at the Roundtable. Take care and bye-bye.